I know a small room which is no more than 1.8 metres by about 1.5 metres, which lets light come in in two, or two small places, which has a wall which is earth plaster, and in the wall the straw shows which is golden, and what little light enters the room is picked up by the golden flecks of straw in the walls. And the walls have rounded corners so that there's no finite meeting of orthogonal surfaces. And in that room are two works of art. One is a scroll that hangs and the other is the pot, the ceramic vessel that's being used for the ceremony. Why is it that when we make things into almost miniature, they become so much stronger? Because that room holds the whole cosmos. The whole universe is in that room. My friend and I, who sat in that room for three quarters of an hour, were spellbound. We spoke not a word to one another. And the trains that were running past nearby, like the traffic outside, we never heard. That's the power of your three rooms and their entrance and so forth to them. The model shows the power of Boyd Studio. I mean, I don't know about the rest of us who have been down there so much, but. I'm really starting to see the importance of Boyd Studio now to the whole place, philosophically. Mm. No question. No question. And, uh, and, you know, I think you've seen that really beautifully. I don't think you've seen it with the motor cars, I'm sorry to say. I would never, ever put in that landscape the glint of the car body, no matter how well landscaped it may be, <coughs> you'll never hide its movement. I would never put them above Boyd's work in any way whatsoever. I would put them at the lowest point. And the, absolutely. And that we walk to this place. To the Temple of Boyd. To the Temple of Boyd. Yeah. But I think you've seen it beautifully. And of course, like all things, you have made it into miniature. If you have ever seen the Bunraku Puppet Theatre, where the puppets are this big, maybe this big, in full traditional costume, operated by puppeteers in full view of the audience, black in their outfits with black masks, operating these puppets, and the life is in the puppets. And then the Grand Master appears in full formal regalia, takes over the puppet, and he disappears. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. And it's through this theatrical made miniature ethos, which I can scarcely explain. I think your scheme has all the potency, the latency, the hidden possibility that I think all great city spaces also should have, like St Peter's, empty most of the time except for the occasional figure walking across it until the election of the Pope and the smoke goes up and it's packed with people and the next day it's empty again. Like the like the reflective surface of the mirrored surface of the pond that picks up the ruffle of the wind and then it disappears and then it comes back. And I think that your scheme has all those sorts of latent, a latent potency about it. And so it's very strong for me and drawing for me. And your thoughtfulness is, is beautiful.